In this video, we are going to discuss a question that was asked in the Ames May 2018 examination from the subject Dermatology. And let's begin the question. This is the 13th question that I'm going to discuss with you. And the question was, what's the incubation period for lymphogranulum venerum? The options that were given to us were, whether it's 9 to 90 days, 10 to 30 days, 30 to 90 days, or 5 to 15 days. Now, STDs as a topic in itself are extremely important as far as the AIMS PG entrance examination is concerned. So I advise everyone who's watching this video to read Dr. Nina Khanna's Dermatology and Venerology book in depth as the topic SADs have been given extremely well in that and prepare SADs as a very important, uh, consider SADs a very important topic. Now the incubation period of various STDs and common STDs is as follows. As far as syphilis is concerned, it's 9 to 90 days. For chancroid, which is caused by H. ducrae, it's 3 to 5 days. For donovanosis, it's 50. The average incubation period is 50 days, while it can actually range from 1 to 1 year, 365 days. For LGB, it has been described as 3 to 12 days. For herpes, the average incubation period is 4 days while the range being from 2 to 12 days well it can actually be in latency for a long period of time uh, for gonorrhea and chlamydia both the organisms which cause urethritis the incubation period is similar of 1 to 5 days while for trichomonas vaginalis remember it's a protozoan which causes the STDs and it characteristically affects females only and causes something known as a strawberry vagina and uh, a greenish discharge and the incubation period for trichomonas vaginalis is 5 to 28 days. So the correct answer for this question becomes 5 to 15 days as the incubation period for LGV is described at 3 to 12 days. So 5 to 15 days is the closest option amongst these given options. Now as far as other options are concerned, 9 to 90 days is the incubation period for syphilis and 10 to 30 days and 30 to 90 days are distractors and can be ruled out. Another question that was asked in Ames May 2018 was, what's the treatment of choice or was a person who's suffering from cardiovascular syphilis, what should he be given? Now, it's basically asking what exactly is cardiovascular syphilis and what's the treatment of choice. Cardiovascular syphilis, as we will discuss, is a form of tertiary syphilis. Now, the natural, natural history of syphilis consists of primary, secondary and tertiary. The primary occurs the first, as the name suggests, primary is the first form of uh, symptoms or signs that occur in the individual it occurs after like i told you incubation period of 9 to 90 days or 2 to 6 weeks for that matter uh it's characterized by something known as a syphilitic chancre syphilitic canker or chancre as people pronounce it uh now syphilitic chancre as you can see in this video this is primary in this photo it has three characteristics that it's single a single it's not multiple it's just a single ulcer Second, it's indurated. As you can see, it has a reddish base. It's indurated. And third, that it's painless. There's no pain associated with it. So these are the three characteristics. That it's single, it's painless, it's indurated. Now, after primary syphilis, a, when a person has not been treated for primary syphilis, this chancre resolves on its own. So the person sometimes thinks that the disease has actually gone away. But later, the disease presents in other signs and symptoms and this is the secondary phase of the disease or the secondary syphilis and this has characteristically a rash and a generalized lymphadenopathy of the entire body and this rash is a maculopapular rash it's a maculopapular rash which characteristic it involves palms and soles remember most rashes do not involve palms and soles while syphilis along with rickettsia these are two of some of the disease which can involve palms and soles. Smallpox also involves palms and soles. Now the rash has this maculopapal like I told you and the color has been characteristically described as coppery red in nature. The color is coppery red, it's maculopapal, involves palms and soles. Now after the rash and the lymphadenopathy, the person goes into a phase known as a latent phase. Now the latent phase in the person, the page page person can be said to have early latent syphilis when the entire duration of symptom is less than two years or he can be said to have late latent syphilis when it's more than two years now latency can be there in people a lifelong latency in up to 70 percent of the cases while some develop another form or uh, other symptoms later when it's known as tertiary syphilis in such case a presentation can be in the form of a gamma or the cvs or the cardiovascular system can be involved in the form of aortitis 
Now this is known as tertiary syphilis and this is a picture of a gamma. It's necrotic, it's ulcerative, commonly occurs in the orofacial region and can occur in other parts of the body. Now what's the treatment for syphilis and that's what the question was. Now as far as primary or secondary syphilis is concerned, the treatment is really simple. We give penicillin. Penicillin is a drug of choice. We just give a single dose IM penicillin, benzathine penicillin in 2.4 million units. Just one shot, 2.4 million units, and the treatment is done for primary and secondary syphilis. Now let's assume the patient has actually has latent syphilis. Now if he has early latent syphilis, the dura entire duration is less than two years. Again, the treatment is similar as primary and secondary. One single dose of 2.4 million units intramuscular benzathine penicillin. Now if he has late latent syphilis, or if he has latent syphilis, and in that case the duration is unknown, it's better to give a higher dose. And in that scenario, we give 7.2 million units in total. And how the 7.2 million units is derived? It's basically we give 2.4 million units weekly, and three doses are given. So a total of 7.2 million units of benzathine penicillin. As far as tertiary syphilis is concerned, if it's gamatous or cardiovascular in nature, and neurosyphilis hasn't occurred, that is with the normal CSF examination, the treatment is similar to late latent syphilis, that is 7.2 million units in total, that is 2.4 million units weekly for three weeks. In case the patient has neurosyphilis, neurosyphilis is a very serious manifestation of syphilis. In that case, much more higher amount of penicillin and a higher dose of penicillin is required and it has to be intense. In that case, aqueous penicillin is given and the dose is 18 to 24 million units per day for 10 to 14 days. It can be given either by a continuous infusion or it can be given every four hours, three to four million units for a total of 18 to 24 million units for a duration of 10 to 14 days, either every four hours or a continuous infusion. Now, if we see the question again, it's asking what's the treatment of choice for tertiary syphilis and that is cardiovascular syphilis. And the answer is similar, si simple, benzathine penicillin, 7.2 million units in three doses weekly. Now, why are these options being given? Erythromycin and doxycycline. As you can see, this option can be similar for a person who has forgotten 7.2 million units, so he can confuse it with 3.6 million, which is the half the dose and something. But why is erythromycin, why is erythromycin and doxycycline being given? When most of us know penicillin is the answer, is the treatment of choice for syphilis caused by treponemal parasite, treponemal pallidum. It's because in case a person has actually penicillin allergy, in that scenario, erythromycin and doxycycline can be given and penicillin cannot be given. And this is the actual dose of doxycycline or erythromycin in case a person is sensitive to penicillin. So doxycycline 100 mg twice a day for one month or erythromycin four times a day 500 mg for 14 days. It can also be given in case of syphilis in case the patient is allergic to penicillin. Thank you. Hi, so I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Please subscribe to my channel if you want such further updates on the AIMS May 2018 paper. I'll be discussing one or two questions of the paper every day. Share it with your friends who you think might benefit from these videos. So thank you and have a nice day.